Hey, everybody, special Thursday video. Making sure, yeah, no notes that, no, no scraps of paper that have any confidential information on it. Okay, so I've been getting a lot of questions about my thoughts about feminist frequency closing. And I think that my response is going to piss off a lot of people. Um, and so I'm just making it in one place so everybody can yell at me here. Um, I'm not going to do the help sports channel or anything like that. If you, if you want to kick me a few bucks, um, the links are in the description boxes, but this is just, I don't normally do Thursday content for anybody but patrons, but this would so dominate feedback Friday. I thought I should do its own thing. Um, I, I think this is going to be, and I come to bury Caesar not to praise him. Shakespeare quote, sorry. Uh, I have made no secret of my disagreements, both in, in tone and in content regarding feminist frequency. I think they're wrong about a lot. Uh, and, and I did think some of the things they were pushing were harmful. Now I'm aware I have to back that up. So, um, that being said, uh, th this was said on Twitch and it wasn't said by me. Eileen put it into words. Eileen is the lady who does all the, the help support this channel graphics and things like that. Um, but she said, I I didn't agree with her, but I'm not going to cheer, you know, somebody's business failing. And I thought that was interesting that, or business closing down. She didn't say failing. I want to quote her accurately. Um, I agree completely on that. It is sad that I was hoping they'd improve. I offered counterpoints and they did they did take some of my talking points without credit. And that's, um, I'd be pissed off about that if that wasn't my intention. Uh, but, and I don't know if that was Anita Sarkeesian. I hold that thought. I'll get to it. I partially believe that burnout, um, Burnout is the reason they're shutting it down. But burnout is a leave of absence, not shutting down a 15-year nonprofit. I think feminist frequency, much like many, many nonprofits, nonprofit sector is hard. It is hard. There is so much paperwork. There is so much red tape. It is such an expensive way to do business. With all the benefits you get, it's, there's a reason I haven't done it yet. I, I ran fundraisers for nonprofits, registering a nonprofit and administrating a nonprofit. You need a bunch of things. Um, as much as I disagreed with them, as much as I think they did cause harm, they tried to do something. They tried to make things better. And I give them credit for that. I think, and this is a part that may make some people angry. I think Anita Sarkeesian had some bad people around her that played to her worst instincts because the fireworks led to attention, led to donations. It was, it was pity cash and that you saw her mental health declining over the period of, you know, over the period of time she did feminist frequency. And the fact that even in her sign off, she had, uh, you know, executive director and Buffy the vampire slayer enthusiast. After all Joss Whedon's done, that's still your title on feminist frequency. That's just, she didn't have the brain trust around her to grow. And this is something I'm 
acutely aware of. I deliberately surround myself with people who clash, who have different points of view from me. Um, if you listen to any of the It's Not Therapy stuff, it's a very eclectic group. You know, we've got Akila, who's who lives in the southern U.S. Yes, she's a trans woman. She's biracial. She's a gun owner, you know, and I'm Canadian. Uh, but we talk about it. And then we've got Moises, who's a sex worker. Uh, he's Canadian as well. And then, you know, Mary Just is an opera singer. And, and Jake, uh, you know, he's 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 that dude nominate him for sainthood um but we're all very different and song is very different as well and it is that difference it is having both men and women around me who do not demand ideological purity that i think is incredibly important and are there clashes sometimes oh yeah we have barn burners but I think that's important. I think that's really important. Families fight. Loved ones fight. And that diversity of opinion was not what we saw in Feminist Frequency's business model. And that's ultimately why I think the experiment didn't work. Uh, and why I think the why Anita Sarkeesian is so burned out. She just did not have real support. And what does it say that the face of video game feminism wasn't supported in her own organization? Now, we can blame her own personal hubris or alleged thin skin on that. I'm a media producer. Uh, and I work with people, you know, I'm a, I'm a peer counselor and personal coach. There's a way to build somebody up and there's a way to tear somebody down. And when the world is tearing you down, you need that team of people you can go to and they may all think you fucked up, but it's like, okay, what do we do now? What are the next steps? And it's very hard to be the face of the organization you run. Trust me, I, I respect the hell out of her for the attempt. But you need people who have your back. You need people who can make those decisions for you when you are exhausted and emotionally compromised because you have just had the shit kicked out of you on the internet for the 40,000th time. And that's where... I mean, we started in very different places, but if you notice my, you know, I, I branched into men's issues, kicking and screaming, because it just seemed like a natural outgrowth of examining gender. I'd done one series entirely on women's issues. I'd done a lot of writing about it. I was sick of writing about it because nobody was listening. And I'll get to that in a minute. Um... The, the pivot that Feminist Frequency did was not well thought out. And I do take steps back on my YouTube content for more contentious things. But that is because I now have personal clients that I don't want caught in the crossfire. Um... But I also, I mean, I do speak my mind on trans issues. And I do think that one of the things that Feminist Frequency didn't do well was this pivot to a pro-trans position. I really credit them for being pro-trans. It's hard. It's not popular right now, especially in feminist circles. I mean, the money's in the turfs. Right now, if you're, you know, not not properly trans, there's no money in it. It's better to be, you know, very, very radically pro-trans. Like everything, just throw the doors open, which is never going to happen. Um, 
but we can do better. Uh, or you have to be gender critical, meaning a turf. And let's face it, many of the femme freak talking points were essentialist. There was this idea that there was something innate about womanhood, which meant sexuality was bad and evil and scary and that there was this constant threat of predation, meaning attack by predators, um, because you're a woman. There was this biological target painted on your back because you have a vagina. You guys know I don't play that game. And that's not because I don't have sexualized violence in my past. I do. More than one instance. I don't talk about it because there's nothing anybody could tell me. And I don't think my experiences are terribly informative. Um... And I, but I do get a lot of, what do you know? You haven't suffered all that stuff. And it's like, oh, fucking spare me. You haven't lived my life. You know, the fact that I have done jobs where I was sexualized. I mean, I was a bomber girl pinup in a video game called Battle Station Specific. And, you know, I love bomber girl art but that's seen as bad now that's seen as objectifying women and if you know you want to call being the patron saint about not thinking about dying for enlisted men during world war ii is objectified all right but it's more nuanced than that and you know i did the ed and red's night party stuff which involved a hot tub on set and dancing girls and interviewing porn stars. And, uh, y you know, uh, there were a lot of sex toys involved in interviews and, and all that stuff. But I went there and I did it and I know how it feels. And I met the women who do it. And that's why my perspective was different. A lot of the things that feminist frequency did were people who had never been in the arena lobbing pot shots at the types of people who did do that work. And that's why I say they're harmful. Because their central premise is that women are prey and men are predators. Men have to be actively restrained from that, which is why they thought the damsel in distress was a problematic trope that was about disempowerment, not innocence. I did a whole episode of Lady Bits that talked about why I disagree. Also, Zelda's not a damsel in distress in any game but Zelda 2. Um, but what happens when you internalize that you are just inherent prey is your warning systems are hyperactive. So you don't take calculated risks. You don't take the opportunities the reason I am so not anti uh single sex spaces but let's think critically about this idea that women need spaces that are only women for protection because that means the public spa spaces are not female every time a woman is not in women's only spaces, there's some perceived threat. You can't focus on your job. You can't focus on your creativity if you are constantly looking out for danger. And I have been in situations where I was smeared for doing my job because I dress sexy. You know, I did art modeling in a, in a Return of the Jedi Leia bikini. Why? Because it showed the whole back. It was great. Um, and some guy came in, started heavy breathing at a con. I didn't complain. A guy who was there complained. I got blacklisted from that con. 
another situation a guy I worked very closely with and this guy still this hurts me still it feels like a betrayal because I thought it was just me doing a job and another person in entertainment doing a job and he was going around telling people he slept with me I do not care if people think I'm a slut I do care that people think I'm cheating on my husband because that's disrespectful to him. And you can see me getting upset about that. That's so disrespectful, not just to the woman involved, but to the man in her life. And that's what we talk about when we talk about objectification. Now, we don't get anywhere with that as long as we have prominent feminist voices that insist on perpetuating the virgin whore dichotomy. And that's what feminist frequency did. But I do not blame feminist frequency for that becoming the standard in gaming. Because no one forced uh, AAA game devs to adopt that perspective. The reason feminist frequency took off is because feminist frequency's talking points validated the pre-existing beliefs of certain critical insecure men in positions of power. And that does not mean the gaming public. I know you guys, I work with you guys, I love you guys. You are not the problem. And, you know, I checked a guy on something really uncomfortable. I'm recording this on Wednesday. I don't know when I'm gonna put it up. But I checked a guy last night on Twitch for something really uncomfortable. Involving race. I was gentle, but I still had to say, dude, you fucked up. And he was like, yeah, I made a mistake. And it was a learning experience. He wasn't scorched earth. He wasn't banned. He wasn't ostracized. We had a discussion. And that's not beneficial just for him. I respect the shit out of guys who take it on the chin that way. And a lot of guys do. And that's how I know gamers can take pushback. Now, I don't consider myself sex typical. Um, I don't even consider myself completely what we would call cisgender. There's something not normal regarding women with me. And that's why I do two women talking. And that, to me, is the other fundamental difference with my approach. But more on that in a bit. Going back to the gatekeepers. Feminist frequency caught fire because men in the industry went, you know what, she's right. A lot of women were going, what the fuck is she on? But men said, she's right. Those sex negative talking points do the same thing to the insecurities of men that things like Andrew Tate con uh, content does. They take all their fears about what they believe the world is really like, all that self-loathing, and hit those buttons. And so it seems true and it seems factual, even though it is not backed up by data. And all the psychosexual guilt in male game devs came out. And it was like Silent Hill 2 all across the industry. And that was the problem. Instead of teaching men that the hottest woman on the planet can be standing bare ass naked in front of you, propositioning you for sex. She is still a person. She is a whole person. She is not an object just for your gratification. And she is not less moral than she was before she did that because you are a fucking participant too, man. And just because you hate yourself, it doesn't give you the right to hate that woman that, you know, Sex doesn't have to be a deeply emotional thing. It should be respectful. And even if you're into, you know, humiliation, kink, and, and BDSM subbing, none 
properly, those are incredible, incredibly respectful things. There's this, there's this bond, there's this code in those communities that when people violate, people get really angry. So the things that people connected to, the idea of damsel in distress bad, for instance, why? That doesn't explore the history of the trope. That doesn't explore the fact that they used women because women were traditionally non-combatants. And so for it was a shorthand of bad guy just kidnaps person who couldn't have done anything wrong. It's no different than kidnapping a kid. You just can't do the, the sexual menacing on a kid. But it's not about her being helpless. It's about presumption she's a non-combatant she's not part of the fight you're dragging someone in who yes has no training to defend herself but also isn't part of this leave them out of it and that's what the entire gaming industry missed and focused on well a woman in a pink dress is inherently helpless thank you barbie for taking us away from that um Oh, it's demeaning to women. Why? Because it underlies the idea that women are not just to the victor go the spoils. We're not the spoils of war. We're not just people people can kidnap because they want to and they can't be stopped. Oh, oh, you know, Song talks about this much better than I do because obviously I ain't that. I'm more of a scrapper. But... The very reason I work with Song is because she has a very different perspective than I do. And for my perspective to be valid, hers also has to be valid. And that doesn't mean people can't disagree. We can't argue on points. But she is not lesser or greater to me because she is more traditionally feminine with more traditionally feminine aesthetic and preferences than I am. Equality means that we don't go, oh, she's more stereotypically masculine, therefore she's tougher. No, feminine strength is a thing. I lack it, which is why I know it's a thing. And one thing feminist frequency did not do was that. They didn't diversify the pool. Everybody had to have the same basic ideas of the inherent qualities of women, the roles of women, and what was good or bad for women as a whole. And that is not equality because that's treating men as individuals and women as a collective. It just, it's very limited. Um, We can do better. We can do better as an industry. And this is where I'm, probably going to piss people off. There's going to be an industry vacuum now. And this can either go very, very good or very, very bad. We can either get games like, say, Ghost of Tsushima that had some really, really good female characters with a female lead as well. Um, Or we can get more games like The Last of Us 2 that was a lot of a lot of one guy's kinks masquerading as feminism. Now we know what side feminist frequency was on. They were sort of, ah, they glad handed the last of us too. I listened to that podcast on that and I was really disappointed that they missed a lot of obvious things. Um, Which if it was anybody else, I think they would have called out. But, The attitudes that were embraced by the industry that feminist frequency was the standard bearer for will not go away on their own. And this is why the Barbie movie is so important. It's women who are feminine, having adventures and making choices. It's not, um, it's not 
one type of woman is good, another type of woman is bad. Oh, it's got to be a woman in a traditionally male space that's so much better than all the guys. It's girly shit. Girly shit is not my shit. I'm happier than shit that Barbie is doing well. I enjoyed the movie, but I related most to Ken. With a side of the daughter who hates Barbie. And I sort of had that coming around to as long as we don't make any one type of woman at a time the ideal and anyone else is less, we can have Barbie and we can have different types of female characters too. You know, we can have the life is strange type characters. We can have the uh, uh, more like Ellie from The Last of Us. Everybody loved Ellie in that first game. So the idea that you won't embrace women who are not, you know, boobs and butts and all that stuff. Again, it's not diversifying if we just do away with all the voluptuous women in favor of boyish women. Because guess what? Voluptuous women exist. And why are feminist voices saying they're dirty? I think that, you know, one one commenter on a video this week made a very impassioned defense of plus size women and that they are beautiful. Guys like that are out there. More of them than you think. It's just a question of, you know, when it comes to certain activities, you have to keep in mind that your playable character has to look like she would do those activities. And also keep in mind that certain body type iconography means different things in, say, Japanese culture than in Western culture. You know, the really curvy women in Japanese culture, yes, there's the smut waifu stuff. But, you know, the traditional depiction of, say, a moon goddess is very voluptuous. It's sort of a big sister, mother nurturing type of thing. And it's racist as fuck to wipe that depiction away. I mean, there are one of my critiques of the God of War franchise, which you know I love, the modern ones, is that Sif looks straight up the way she does described in Norse myth. But the main character, Freya, doesn't look anything like she's described. They've planed her up. And it somewhat makes sense with the character, but I still was disappointed at, I mean, okay, they radically changed Baldur as well. So they're not just doing it to women, which is why I, I'll, I say that is not a double standard. They changed a lot of the look of characters. They got Thor spot fucking on based on North myth, Norse myth. But they even changed up Odin. So, okay, they didn't just do it to the female characters. They reimagined, so that's fine. But I was disappointed that we didn't get an iconic looking character in Freya, the way we got an iconic looking character in Kratos. And I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I was disappointed. And there's the difference. If I thought something was actually a problem with the depiction in that game, I'd say so. I wouldn't hide behind problematic. I'd say this is a problem. And this is what I mean about harm. The thing we still need to fix is the straight jacket women are in regarding what is considered professional. And if there is a whiff of any sort of existence below the waist or even below the neck, a whiff of this is a person with a healthy sexuality, men become distracted and then women are at risk. As long as that exists, that will hold women back 
in workplaces, that will hold women back as creators, that will hold women back as artists. Because this entire sub-process devoted to what signal am I sending? And, you know, let's face it, we all know that if a male-dominated team finds a girl attractive or available, they're more likely to get hired than us. That's something that has to go away too. Because it should be on, you know, uh, a guy in game dev doesn't rise or fall on whether his colleagues think he's fuckable. And there is still a lot of that. And that's the thing that's kind of strange is I think Anita Sarkeesian's a very attractive woman. And so the amount of self-loathing that she exhibited in her talking points just made me, I wanted to give her a hug because... It's okay to be pretty. You know, it's okay to be pretty and not the barbified ideal. You know, you don't you don't have to look like Cortana from Halo. You know, it's guys do care about a woman's personality. And that's why people were like Ellie's great. And there is this phenomenon, but Women do it too, where when you like someone's personality, the porn starts, the fan art starts, the thirst traps start, right? And as long as that's only a fantasy and not an expectation, that's okay. But I read a story about, what is it, the Seattle Kraken, the hockey team, that they had this book talk phenomenon that they were basically doing smut fix about hockey players and it got so bad that the hockey players themselves were like, stop doing this. This is making us really uncomfortable. Stop objectifying us. And it became this whole thing. Um, so there's a certain critical mass where it starts getting unhealthy. But to that point, as long as people just want to create their own stuff because they like it and they're not expecting or demanding it of the canon work, all good. But when you see the fandoms that are the worst for that, it's the female-dominated ones. I mean, Steven Universe got mental for no good reason. Um, the most disturbing fan service I've seen in Western and like Western produced anime style stuff. I'm like, that is for psycho fangirls. And that's really disturbing. And that also comes about and we can't have a discussion about it because we won't admit that women are sexual beings. Apologies to you, ace crowd out there. Um, you matter too. And that's why there should also be content that's not sexualized. And that's okay. Not everything. I mean, I'm sure there's Five Nights at Freddy's slash. I'm sure there is. Holy fuck. There's, you know, rule 34. But we can have discussions about whether this is the right decision for a work. And we should never have gotten to a point where we were nerfing the costumes primarily of the female characters in Mortal Kombat. That was just, this has gone too far. And the idea, oh yes, we were being more respectful of women. We're going to release the original costumes as DL3, DLC three cycles later. Like that's just bullshit. That is just fuck off. That is not feminist frequency. That is bullshit orchestrated by male team leads oh it's more respectful but here's the costumes you originally liked oh so now you're releasing the less respectful cost what the fuck man you cannot have it both ways and these are the conversations we need to have these are the conversations i believe we will not have because now it's going to be fucking thunderdome now it's going to be a a a bunch of people jockeying for the role of queen bee feminist and that is what we can't return to 
We need to have a plurality of voices. We don't just need two women talking. We need three women talking, four women talking, five women talking. We have to show women disagreeing on things because that's another big problem. Male devs, not the players, but male devs still freak out when you've got three women on the dev team that <gasps> don't agree on something. Can't handle it. You got to treat your, your female staff and non-binary staff the same way you do your men when they're dogpiled on social media, when they have a rough week. And that means treating your men with more compassion and not expecting them to suck it up because you wouldn't expect anyone else to. It means really being creative and having the exact same process when you design a female character as opposed to a, as well as a male character, which means, yeah, sometimes she's going to be wearing less. Kratos, you can see his nipples in the damn winter. I love Kratos. You know that. I don't have a problem with that. It's silly. It's stupid. It's part of the fun. He's a god. You know, he doesn't have to worry about frostbite. But still, looks pretty cold. Um, we have to be mature about actual mature content. The problem is in order to have an adult conversation about depictions of gender, sexuality, masculinity, femininity, you have to have mature people having these conversations. And a lot of people making these decisions are so stunted they don't know what they don't know. And they're so filled with shame. And they're having their kinky sex parties behind closed doors and acting like a prude in public. And instead of just being honest. And I mean, this is why Japan is far from a perfect, perfect culture when it comes to depictions of women. I mean, they got a problem with people getting groped on the subway there. But in terms of their media, Japanese creators can just come forward and say, I like this. This was cool to me. I made it. They have such simple motivations for the things they do. Whereas when a Western dev talks about, it's like this fucking university thesis on why they did something. It's like, that is fucking bullshit. You thought it was cute. And then you refined it. I mean, I fell into making a game about a fairy tale princess who is, you know, her superpower is she's a damsel in distress. I fell into that because I made something and people liked it. So I'm like, okay, let's do more and let's add and let's add and let's add. But I mean, Princess Sparkle Muffin was originally created as a lampoon. She was intended to be annoying, but the sweetness of the character overpowered it and I realized there was something significant to say about somebody who's very different than me. And do I occasionally feel unwanted? Oh, more than occasionally. Do I feel rejected? Yes. Do I feel like the gaming industry thinks I'm ugly and unwanted and gross and monstrous? absolutely yes I've been feeling that at some point every day lately but does that mean I can take it out on media does that mean I can lash out at dudes minding their own business just playing a game that makes them happy no that's wrong I have to figure out what the hell is making me feel that way and work on that not take it out on other people because I feel an overwhelming awfulness. And I think that what Anita Sarkeesian did well is she gave voice to that overwhelming awfulness that women tend to feel. But when it came to the next step, when it came to do something about it, feminist frequency had no second act. It was just the overwhelming awfulness show. Oh, blah. 
you know, just barfing it into the cosmos constantly. The misery, the pain, the fear, the harassment, the... I mean, I'm pretty sure she's got PTSD and it's hard to watch. I, I, I... The people around Anita Sarkeesian did her no favors. They did the opposite. I think she was used. I think she was trotted out as a show pony to bring in short-term cash and she didn't understand what was happening to her. And that's very wrong. And if a woman who is a voice of feminism in this industry ended up exploited like that, no one's safe. No man, no woman, no one's safe. And that's what we have to keep an eye on. Humans are humans, even when you hate their guts. That's what makes hatred so damaging. That's what makes it so dangerous. And that's why the invective that feminist frequency threw at traditionally attractive women, which is weird because I consider Anita, Anita Sarkeesian a traditionally attractive woman. She's pretty, which is why I don't get the, the, the war on pretty. She's pretty, you know? Um, what the, the hatred can blind you to the damage you yourself are causing, the people you are hurting. And hatred makes you less inclusive. Fear makes you less inclusive. These are all things that make us shut down and make us less open to new experiences. And gaming has this incredible ability to help you identify with people who are not like you by allowing you to walk in their shoes. So I still believe we have a real opportunity to explore gender, gender identity, gender performance, gender role. And we can do it inclusively and we can do it as fun and we can do this as I think this is beautiful as opposed to I think this is respectful because the thing about beauty is if you truly think someone is beautiful, you respect them and you treat them well. You don't go, this is beautiful, so I'm going to tarnish it, sully it, make it, make it less beautiful. You, you don't destroy beauty. And if we continue to just spew the ugliness within us into hot take think pieces, we're going to destroy a lot of beauty. And beauty can be extremely healing. I just think more people have to feel like they're safe to be honest about what they find beautiful in men, women, and everyone in between and beyond. And that was not the legacy of feminist frequency. And my prediction is there's just going to be new faces saying the same things. My hope is that we can have conversations like Song and I have on Two Women Talking, which one person said, yes, I'm reading a comment, but this series has been a cure for the more insidious parts of the red pill ideology for me. I think it's exposure therapy. We don't often get to hear two women having intelligent conversations without a care for the opinions of men or women, just two people having an intellectual heart to heart about all of the issues with media and the gender wars enveloping of times. That's why we did the show. That's where we need to go. And that's why I'm so protective with song when people say, you know, the occasional nasty thing about her. Because yeah, she's different from me. Yeah, we're not going to have the same opinions. That's the whole fucking point. Men are allowed to do that. Why can't women? And that that the fact that somebody said this is a cure for red pill ideology not the gatekeeping not the removal of the sexiness not the war on femininity not putting every woman in a brown sack with a cinch waist because that's it with brown hair make ponytail and a b cup because that's what we consider safe no 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 different women having conversations disagreeing expressing feelings going there not agreeing on everything, but supporting each other. That is the way forward. And we are working on having a guy come on as a guest with two women talking. So we are taking that step. We want to do it. 
this is the way. I know that's a Mandalorian thing. It sucks that Feminist Frequency is closing its doors. Again, I wanted them to evolve, not end. We have an opportunity here. Let's take it. Let's build on the work we did. Let's do better. They did. Let's do better. Let's evolve. Let's take that next step that because of toxicity within that organization, it was not able to do. We got this. I be, I've worked in television. I've worked in radio. I've worked in digital online content. Gaming has the absolute best opportunity to really get this right. I believe this with my whole heart. So let's fucking do it. That's where I'm going to leave you.